All right. We got to talk. Now! It's been quite an interesting few days of April for Jesse Radio, huh? Especially with the most recent discovery of a certain leak. But we're not going to talk about that yet. That's going to be for later. There is another topic that I did want to touch upon when it comes to Jet Set Radio. Obviously, this is a niche series with only three games with nothing new coming out for 21 years. Two things that have been important for me about this series are preservation and documenting. When I first started my channel, I had the goal of wanting to do deeper dives about Jet Set Radio. Talk about the things that has never been talked about by others or show things that no one else has done and show it in the best quality possible. Whether it be by gameplay stuff, characters, animations, story, the one thing I want is for everyone to see all that Just Set Radio has to offer and open people's minds about what an impact it had. However, there comes a giant issue for a franchise that has had nothing in two decades. The fans start starving for something, anything new to come out about Jet Set Radio. Just a sliver of content. This leaves open to the internet's greatest enemy, misinformation. There's one thing I've noticed happening in the Jet Set Radio community so often, it's fella straight up lying. Now obviously spreading misinformation about a game isn't new. But there is something that stings so much more when you go after a community that's been starving for something new and you feed them lies to just laugh at their face or just to be corny. April has been full of that lately and I think it's something that I have to address before we get into the really big thing that happened just days ago. Let's begin. Chapter 1. April Fool's Socks April Fool's, one of my least favorite holidays to exist. This is when the misinformation fellas start cooking up something devious. Want to know how to make a good April Fool's joke? The murder mystery of Sonic the Hedgehog, a Sonic visual novel made by fans and published by Sega which took Sonic in a drastically different direction by making the whole plot be a murder mystery of who killed Sonic, which is the theme of Amy's party since it's her birthday and it's a murder mystery. And we're trying to figure out who is responsible. That's a good April Fool's joke, subverting expectations of what you usually expect from Sonic and putting the franchise in a scenario that hasn't been done before officially. It was harmless, it was free, and it was actually funny. You know what's the worst type of April Fool's joke? Making something that feeds on the desires of what people would love to see, trying to present it as something real and official when in reality, it's just one big fat lie. This actually happened. The day before April Fools, a user posted this Jet Set Radio comic cover stating that they are the lead artist of this brand new IDW comic with Sega themselves. Now when I first saw it, I saw it was getting a lot of traction and some mutuals of mine as well as other people from the Jet Set Radio community were excited. But then when I looked at what tomorrow was going to be, I was like, hold up, wait a minute. Something ain't right. Tomorrow, at that time, it was going to be April Fools. That's number one. Number two, IDW or Sega would have talked about this themselves on their social medias if something like this were to actually happen. A sole artist bringing up something like this without the consent of the publishers would have to be a big no-no with the NDA. Number three, tomorrow was April Fools, the best day to spread misinformation. You can even see it here where it says April Fools where the credit stuffs are. Of course, on the day of April Fools, the guy reveals that it was indeed not a real comic. I mean, I saw that coming from a mile away, but a couple of people were very disappointed and very annoyed by this. I have no qualms against the artist at all and no one should be attacking the guy over a joke. That's whack. But... That was a really bad and whack joke, especially towards a community who's been extremely dry of content for years. It's also a bad thing if you're an official source for archiving old Jet Set Radio stuff. It's definitely not a good idea to make a fake magazine post and post it as real when you're the main source of getting information like that. It makes it hard to trust you, so be careful when doing something like that. Speaking of main sources of information, Chapter 2. The Jet Set Radio Wiki is unsalvageable. The Wikipedia is your best friend when getting some general information about anything. Tons of different media have their own dedicated wiki pages. 
Jet Set Radio is of course no different. The Jet Set Wiki is there to get all sorts of information about all things relating to Jet Set Radio. However, I have a disclaimer to warn you all about it and tell you, do not go on the Jet Set Radio Wiki for meaningful information. You're probably wondering, what the hell is going on? Recently, the Jet Set Radio Wiki has been vandalized by some people who edited the wiki to put a bunch of nonsense on it. Like I said at the start of the video, I'm all about documenting and preserving all the things Jet Set Radio has to offer. That's why I work so hard on things like getting all the references from the crossover games, getting all the dialogues and special interactions in future, summarizing the stories and the characters to the best of my abilities. I want people to have easy access and reliable sources to Jet Set Radio related things. So when I see something like inflation art on the ah. wiki page, we definitely got beef. The Jet Set Radio Wiki was already kinda bad because it was missing tons of information on characters and stages, so you weren't able to get everything you probably would have liked to learn from the wiki, but now the entire wiki is just filled with straight up lies. Let's go through the list, shall we? Now, I've played Sonic Adventure 2 a bunch of times. And with all the grinding I've done in City Escape for Chow Guarded, I can confirm as well as many others who have played Sonic Adventure 2 religiously that there is no Jet Set Radio stuff in that game. Mew was never planned to be a playable character in Transform to begin with. She's just a sticker and her future variation Rift is a cameo on the Graffiti City stage. Mew was never planned to be a playable character. Garum never says this. Of course there's no evidence of him saying this because he doesn't say it in the game at all. I know Clutch is a thief, but Korn never says this. Where did this even come from? I'm in Soda dating? What the hell are you talking about? This fanfiction storyline you came up with. Cube did what with who? On top of the wild stuff I've shown here, even worse is that whoever is editing the wiki started adding ages to the future variations of characters. Now, if you remember correctly, the future variations of characters do not have canonical ages. It'd be one thing if they just copy and pasted ages from that Japanese exclusive guidebook for the OG game, but no, they're just making up stuff. Clutch 17? Boogie 17? Like, what are we doing here? The whole goddamn wiki is a mess. It's impossible to get any reasonable information in there without going through the pile of garbage that's been spread all over it. So to everyone, do not go to the Jet Set Radio Wiki for information. It's a cesspool of lies and misinformation. So whoever messed up the Jet Set Radio Wiki with this nonsense, you're honestly a complete cornball. Chapter 3. The Big Leak. Alright, we gotta talk about... This. Now, a year ago, I talked about the Sega Financial Report where they brought up this idea of Super Games. I wasn't exactly sure what that entailed at the time, but one of the series that was brought up that Sega would probably want to go back and reboot was Jet Set Radio. Now, nothing really came from that until n now, where this footage popped up. Now, what exactly are we seeing here? Well, that's Beat with a completely new design doing his idol dance from Future. The game is in this drastic new style. He's in Shibuya Crossing with Rokako police behind him. So, where did this all come from? The initial video was discovered and leaked by user Skyraider G7. The footage was bundled with some high quality footage of Yukari from Persona 3, summoning her persona and attacking in Tartarus, implying a Persona 3 remake is on the horizon which was also rumored for quite some time. As well as early footage of Sonic Frontiers where it shows Kronos Island in its entirety before it was split into parts to be Rhea and Oranos Island. It had much better lighting and overall graphics. Now, the footage was crazy enough, but then we also have this image. This image was leaked by user Andres Lopez, who has also leaked Sonic Origins Plus concept art. Now, from my understanding, this image comes from an official SEGA survey from 2021, even showing this image in different styles of cell shading. As you see in this image, Beat, Gum, and Combo are in Shibuya Crossing with completely new designs. 
Now, there's been tons of talk in the Jet Set Radio community about the look of the art style and the design of the characters. Some think the designs are fine, others really detest how it looks and do not like how it's a far departure from what Jet Set Radio usually looks like. Especially considering Bomb Rush Cyberpunk is much closer to the style that fans know. Where do I fall in this matter? And they're alright. I definitely think they could look better. It is very strange seeing Jet Set Radio without the cell shading, but I'm going to be honest, I don't hate the art direction and I think the redesigns are not bad. To start off with B, he changed the lease. He still has a lot of his trademark assets like the headphones and goggles, and he has his OG color scheme again. His fit didn't really change much except for one thing. He is now wearing a jacket with what I assume his name is also on it. It's funny because if there was one thing I wanted B to have if they were to ever redesign him, it was to give him a jacket. And they did it. So B's design gets a thumbs up for me, honestly. Combo's design is almost like his OG design. The same idea in terms of the fit he's wearing, but the color of his hat is new, and he has a new jacket with racetrack stripe sleeves and the burgundy collar color. Not only that, but this man has two chains on. He got his trademark yen chain and then another small pendant. However, he is missing his boombox. I hope they give that back to him. Then we have Gum. Alright, clearly this is the biggest redesign out of the trio here and it's coming from one of the main mascots of the series. The only thing she's really retained is her color scheme of green, but now her outfit is fully green with three different shades. And speaking of her outfit, she lost the dress entirely. She's now wearing a long sleeve crop top. They actually gave her some shorts to wear. She's got leggings, but the big thing is she doesn't have her helmet anymore. It's now replaced with a beanie like Korn has. Gum's design has definitely been the most controversial with the majority of fans not being a fan of this change. I'll admit for me, it took a little bit to really grasp the big change, but the more I looked at it and then also seeing Rudy Queen's interpretation of the outfit, I actually started really liking it. It is definitely a departure from the gum we know, but I'm not upset at the change. Actually, I think the crop top and beanie makes her lean a little more to that tomboy side of her, and the stocking shows the feminine aspect. If there was one thing I was worried about for Gum, it was gonna be them erasing the sexual aspect of her looks. But they retained it. She's now showing some skin from the top, and the stockings make her look even more attractive. Do I prefer Gum's older designs? Yeah, especially her future design I like the most. But I'm definitely fine with this change in style. This leak has thrown the entire community into a frenzy and disarray. So many questions from me as well. Is this really happening? What would this game be like? Something close to the original or future? Is Hideki coming back for the soundtrack? What will the rest of the cast look like? Will the GGs and the rivals have personalities again like in future or be blank slates like they were in OG? Is there going to be full voice acting for the GGs and the rivals? What's this game's story going to be? So many questions, but the real answer is, is this even real? And the big fat answer is... I don't know. Funnily enough, when researching stuff for this video, I found the initial tweet that led me to the rest of the leaks from this Twitter user. The tweet stated, Special thanks to this anonymous user DM for this. So it seems this was part of footage from Sega of Japan's internal meeting held in 2021. The Japanese characters on the top right reads, footage in development. When I went to check out their tweet where I first found the leak, their account no longer existed. Which made me think, hold up brother, this person is now deceased from the platform. There is two possible scenarios, either option one, he dropped some devious fakes and decided to dip just in case he got backlash and no one can access him. Option two, Sega came to this person's crib and said, Mods, crush his skull, thank you. 
both are plausible possibilities because, well, lying on the internet is just a normality. But however, saying you got footage from an internal meeting, definitely gonna get you clipped by the company for spreading information you weren't supposed to. Whatever the case may be, we will never know this person's true fate. How I'm feeling about all this? I'm actually waiting for someone to come out and just say, Haha, we were trolling. There's no new Jet Set Radio, you goofballs. Not because I don't want to see this become a reality. Of course I want this to be real. But on some Jin Kazama type beat, this is reality. And the misinformation on the internet, especially in the Jet Set Radio community, is very common. All I can really say at the end of the day is, we gotta take this with a grain of salt and wait and see what actually comes out from this. If it turns out to be fake, I'm not surprised and I played myself like a clown. If it turns out to be real... Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like and also comment your thoughts on it. And if you're interested in seeing more of my content, make sure you hit the like button and hit that notification bell to know when my next upload will be. I also have a Twitter account that you can follow in the link in the description. Thank you for watching and have a good day.